Good morning to good morning to Dr. John. And uh, okay, uh, before I start, uh, uh, before I allow to Dr. John to uh, present, I will uh, read about the, his CV first. Okay, is it okay with you, professors? Okay, Dr. John uh, did his studies at the Faculty of Odontology in Lyon, France, from which he obtained his DDS in 19, 1996 and his PhD in 1999. He worked for four years in the hospital in Renew in Ireland as assistant of the head chief of clinic in the dental surgery service until 2003. He then started in 2004 his own private practice and now is head, head of a clinic with 23 employees, uh, dentists, uh, endodontics, orthodontics, and, and a, lot of, a lot of dental specialties working all together in the same way, satisfaction of the patient by bringing state-of-the-art work following the recommendation of science. After having a com a complete his course and graduate in periodontology and implantology, he then dedicated his work exclusively to these topics. He's speaker for the Global D French implant manufacturer and involved in the OSCAR program of transfer of knowledge. He opened his own private uh, structure, Center of Indian Ocean for Oral Implantology, where dentists from all the world can follow immersive course in oral implantology and place their first implant on real patient. In the surgery department of the clinic, under the supervision of an experienced surgeon over their shoulder. Okay, uh, I will please uh, Dr. John to uh, begin the presentation. Hello. Yes, Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for this uh, very nice presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Linda, the Dean of your fantastic University of University of Indonesia. And uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mahendra for the introduction. Thank you, Dr. Melissa for getting in touch with us and making all this possible today. As Dr. Linda said, it's uh, uh, a kind of a strange things that we are all living now with this pandemic. And uh, uh, thanks to the incredible things that we have with internet, we can still get in touch all together and can still share all our knowledge and for the best of our patients. So thank you so much for this invitation. And if you don't mind, I will uh, share my screen right now. We will start the presentation. Okay, is it okay for everyone? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Okay, that's perfect, thank you. So uh, let's start this uh, little journey for the tips and tricks for the success of uh, implant treatments. And if we are talking about the eye immediate loading full arch procedures, we have to talk briefly about the, all the procedures that leads us to uh, the success of such a uh, um, such restoration, of course, we have to know many things about only one tooth restoration, and then after we can have good success for a full arch restorations. So as uh, Dr. Mahendra said, I made my studies in Lyon. This is a short and brief presentation. So Lyon is quite in the middle of France with the second city of the, of the, the France, very well known for his gastronomic. And uh, just after my studies, I decided to take a plane, flight over the Africa and went just next to Madagascar, yeah, in a very small island in the Indian Ocean called Reunion Island. Saint-Denis is the major city of this very small island. We are almost one million living here. And um, <clears throat> this is what you can see from the cockpit when you arrive in Reunion Island. It's a very small island, volcanic island. And uh, in French, it's named Ile de la Réunion. And you can see it's really, really tiny and you can have many things there. You can enjoy many sites. It's one of the most active volcano in the world. Of course, Indonesia, fantastic volcanoes also, uh, the Bromo and uh, 
the Kawaii Jane and so on, but we have the Piton de la Fournaise, which is uh, one of the most active as I just said. We have like maybe two, three, even four eruptions a year. So it's quite nice. And we have many scenery places like these lunar places. We have, of course, nice seaside, but you in Indonesia have amazing places too. And uh, we can see uh, some of the whales. We can, we can go hiking and we can go in the nature. We can go canyoning. We can do many, many things. So uh, if you share, if you want, if you dare, we will be more than happy to welcome you in our place and in our clinic. And maybe some of you would like to come and visit us and maybe start the little uh, training that we can offer and that Dr. Mahendra just said, or maybe, and if we stay tuned, maybe it's gonna come alive one day. Maybe we could make all together with the Universitas Indonesia a good, uh, good thing that we can um, bring to your house, to your door, uh, this uh, Implant Academy. So uh, let's talk about the keys to success in immediate loading full arch procedures. So as you can see on these little pictures, it's just a short example of what we can do. Most of the time we know these procedures like all on X, like all on four, all on six, sometimes all on eight implants and sometimes more than all on 10, which is more and more um, um, abandoned. And most of the time we used to put like eight implants in the full jaw for the upper jaw and maybe six implants or maybe eight are largely enough for the lower jaw. So <clears throat> if I can um, express things like that, I've been recently to Spain in Barcelona and in Barcelona there was a fantastic architect who built a, a fantastic cathedral called the Sagrada Familia. His name was Anthony Gaudi. And I found this, uh, uh, the word is said, very suitable for our work. So to do things right, first you need love and then you need technique. And if we are all here today, it's because we love our job and we definitely love it. And then we will get more and more expert. We will uh, improve our skill and technique will come. And this is maybe why we can achieve good treatments for the good of all of our patients. So talking about implant treatments, and you will see on the right picture, uh, a treatment implant treatment, and you will tell me maybe how many implants do you see in this picture, but you will have the answer at the end of the, <coughs> of the presentation. So implant treatment has become very frequent and uh, many survey, many evaluation have been managed throughout the years. And we can say that for more than 30 years now, implant is a good solution if it's not the first race solution for replace single uh, extraction. And most of the time for multiple restoration, it's all also a good, uh, a good option. Of course, it's a good option because it has an excellent integration. So as dentists, we have to uh, rebuild sometimes the smile and the function and the aesthetics and the phonation of our patients. And the good thing about implants that the material we use are very uh, good for integration in a biology, biological point of view. So we will see this uh, quite closely. It has an excellent sustainability and of course, with the constant evolution of the products by the manufacturers, we can have uh, good, uh, good uh, options for the futures. So uh, Professor Mahendra, who is prosthodontics, head of prosthodontics, uh, will agree on these three major principles that when we are talking about the restoration, we always have to follow the three major principles, which is first, and always first the prosthetic project. Then after the prosthetic project, we can go to surgery if we need surgery, of course. And after the surgery and the prosthetic reconstruction on the implant, because we're talking about implants today, we will surely need to do maintenance because without maintenance, there is no way and there is no chance that our uh, restoration will succeed for the long lasting period.
So uh, today with all this improvement, we can uh, uh, with just some simple photos and some digital imprint, uh, impression, we can make a digital clone of the patient. So during the first consultation, for instance, this patient uh, had no canine and the aim was to um, extract the, the, the canine, the provisory canine, temporary canine, and to implant definitive ones. So we could not match that in the first step. We had to remove, we have to extract, we have to make a bone construction, and then we will implant her later. But with all these kind of new techniques, we can lead to uh, digital uh, walks up, and then we can test the smile. It's a smile test drive. And of course, uh, with the digital impression, all our labs are able to make this virtual wax up that leads to the smile test drive that you can see on the picture. I'm just wondering if I cannot change my... Uh, 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 my An arrow annotation you can click on the above view options yeah and then here i am um where shall i go i have the souri this is a mouse Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Where is it? I have lost it. Um, Excuse me, just one minute. I have lost my mouse. <laughs> Don't worry. There we go. Okay. So. Uh -huh -huh. I have a bug. Station. Where is it? Here, uh, uh, mouse. No. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm really sorry for that. I made a wrong manipulation and I've lost my mouse. I don't see where I am. If anybody has a suggestion, I will oh, sorry, you. or you can uh, stop uh, stop share screen and then uh, begin yeah. to share screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have it again. Thank you. Then I start it again. Is it okay for you? Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Okay. That's good. So sorry for this wrong manipulation. So we were talking about all the process that we have and that we can use to make the digital clone and to allow us to make the planification for the next, uh, for the next surgery and for uh, the prosthetic uh, plan and the prosthetic project before doing anything else. So uh, let's sorry, talk about- uh, Sorry, that. doctor. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Uh, yeah. You already share your screen? Yeah, you don't have it? Yeah, no, no, no. 
Okay, sorry. So uh, sometimes uh, you using you using a keynote, right? Or yeah. Or probably you can share uh, on on the below on the below of the Zoom. You can see a share screen and just share your uh, share your window. Sometimes uh, the bug really happen and bother a lot. Though. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, Thank doctor. You. Thank you so much for your for your help. There we go. Lecture again. Is that okay? Yes. Perfect. Good. So um, let's go back to the topic and um, the precepts that we have to follow. And of course, we will lead to uh, try to mimic the nature in order to succeed in our restorations. So uh, talking about the nature, we have to see, uh, um, we have to talk about the roots. And if you can see, uh, you can see on this, uh, on these photos that there is no root, root no, no roots look like the other one. Uh, all these roots that we've cut are here presented and there is, uh, they all come from different patients. And you can see that there is no uh, exactly the same roots, considering the central incisor, the, 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 the molars, upper or lower molars. So considering this, it has been a main issue and a main reflection topic to, 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 to try to mimic the nature and to try to put the implant in the right position in order to give the right emergence profile no matter the, the shape of the original root to succeed in our treatment. So uh, many uh, topics and many tools for the emergence profile has been uh, created. The most common are the healing caps that we all use that you can see on the lower left pictures. Every manufacturer's that, sold in, that sell implants give his own healing caps, but we can customize these caps in order to create a proper emergence profile for each tooth that you are replacing. And you have at your service many devices, like on the upper left side, there is Lyra, Lyra ETK that is providing four different shapes. Uh, in order to uh, promote this emergent profiles. You can have also on the middle picture, a new system that is called VPI. And this is very, very convenient to manage the emergence profile. So uh, the conventional uh, treatment for that, the conventional way to do that is to put implant, to put the normal healing abutment. And after that, you have a good healing of the tissue of the gum all around the implant. And when you, have, when you have such nice papillas and a good keratinized gingiva all around, you can be sure that your restoration is going to be uh, a good success. So most of the time, 10, 20 years ago, we used to put big implants in order to replace big tooth. When we were on the molar side, we used to put implants from four millimeters of diameter up to 4.5, 5.5, sometimes 6.5. And nowadays we try to reduce the size of the implants. We try to reduce the importance of titanium and, uh, and we try to make the more and more volume of uh, natural bone and natural uh, gum all around the implants in order to succeed more and to be uh, more sticky to the nature. So this is a new process that is called SSA, socket shield abutment, which was uh, described first uh, by Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Gary Finel, who is now a traditional speaker in France and sometimes uh, in, uh, in Europe, maybe in the United States. So you can see after implant placement, he makes with the abutment, uh, provisional abutment, he makes uh, a, a, a completely, how to say that, uh, a completely uh, fitted to the nature, completely fitted to the case uh, abutment. 
And this allows, I would like to remove this. This allows us to have a very nice uh, construction that allows the gum to heal all around this new abutment, which has been done specifically for the need of this case. And uh, this leads to very, very nice reconstruction and keep the volume of the tissues all around the implant. So uh, of course, uh, preservation of the volumes is a very, uh, is a major issue and a major topic that we have to, uh, that we have to stick to. As you all know, when we all, uh, as we all grow, the teeth are coming up into the jaw and the bone is being constructed with this, uh, with this procedure of, um, of eruption of the tooth. And that leads us to such a splendid uh, smile that this, this actress can show. But if we don't take care about, uh, if we don't take care of our, of, our, of our teeth and if we don't maintain them properly, we can lose them with periodontitis and we can lead to such a nice, not such a nice, <laughs> nice smile on the guide on the right hand side. So of course uh, we need, we definitely need to, uh, to preserve our, our, our teeth. And when one of them has to be removed, uh, it is very important to try to keep the volume of the tissues because as the literature, literature says, the bone loss during the first year after a teeth removal is very important. We have 50% of the alveolar ridge, which is lost and one third of the roof eye, which, is, which means two to four millimeters. And the most important thing is that 75% of the old bone loss is lost during the three first months after extraction. So saying so, it's really important after extraction, as much as we can do, to try to preserve the volume. And if we, not tr and, and if we don't do so, we will have to make more bigger reconstructions, and this is not good and not suitable for the patient. So sometimes when we don't have uh, the opportunity to um, have so much, uh, we can, uh, the patient has no, uh, sorry, I, I have lost again my window. Uh -huh. oh. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So, um, when, uh, in the event of the, the, the tooth hasn't been replaced quite shortly after the extraction, and we and the resorption occurred. We have to make bone res bone regeneration. So this is few topics and a few example of the bone regeneration that we can uh, that we can have to do. So this is an horizontal bone re bone um, grafting in order to enhance the transversal width and thickness. So we use different materials, and we will talk about that in a few minutes. And uh, that can, after the uh, CTG, after the apically position flap, after, of course, the bone regeneration and the implant placement, that can lead to a quite secure option for the patient with uh, like a, a two millimeters width of uh, keratinous gingiva all around the implant that will ensure a good stability and a long lasting treatment. So managing the pink is one of the thing that we have to clearly manage fantastically because it gives the long lasting of the treatment. So there are many ways to manage this thing and we can make a position, a curly position flap, we can make CTG, free gingival graft, roll flaps, tunnel technique, everything is possible in order to enhance the position and to favorize the quantity of uh, gum all around the implant. So as you can see, this is one apically, apically positioned flap. So uh, the flap has been uh, 
uh, elevated from the palatal aspect and displaced on the buccal aspect and that allow us to give a big thick keratinized gingiva on the vestibular aspect and the buccal aspect and you see the healing after uh, placing the healing cap the healing is very nice and we can proceed and we take the impression a few days ago and uh, we will surely have a good restoration upon this kind of uh, surgeries we can also make free gingival graft in order to enhance always enhance the pink and the keratinized tissue and will this uh, free gingival graft on the vocal aspect we can surely be uh, uh, quite confident uh, on the on the treatment so um, we were talking about tunnelizing the tunnel techniques so this patient came to the office uh, after having lost his two central incisors so we removed the incisors uh, we put the implant in the palatal aspect, we make the bone graph and we will see all these details throughout this presentation. And then we made the, uh, the connective tissue graph with the tunnel technique. So there is no uh, incision uh, from the lateral aspect. Everything is being done by tunnel icing. And this is very easy for the patient because the, there is no wound and the, the, the the, the surgery are very well accepted. So you can see on this CBCT, the implant placement, we left like maybe two millimeters on the buccal aspect from the implant in order to place the implant in the central and have more bone possible all around the implant. And that is a good way to have success as well. And then we take the impression. This was a scan impression with the, with the camera. And then two days after uh, the patient came back to the office and then we placed the implant four days after, we placed the, 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 the prosthetic crown four days after. And this is the result we have six days after the surgery. And you can see how the gum and how everything went well. And what is the healing we have after one week of surgery. So the patient was quite happy and this is my, on the left hand side, this is my assistant, surgery assistant. Uh, without her, I can do anything good. So uh, she's my precious assistant and we are a good team and we are very happy when we can success like this. So of course, talking about the pink management, we can uh, also uh, go to free gingival graft with a modified technique like uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Urban Itzvan uh, presented uh, in in a few a few few months ago, so we can take we can harvest from the palate, and after uh, after this we can have the good graft and the good gain. As you can see on the upper left picture, we had like maybe a seven millimeters gain of uh, keratinized tissue, and with the second uh, surgery we had the option to uh, uncover the covering screws to put the healing caps. And then we made there the semilunar surgery for reconstruction of the papilla described by Tano. And this is what we gained one week after the surgery. And this is what we gained yesterday because this case is very, uh, very recent. And we took the impression yesterday. And as you can see, we have gum surrounding all around the abutments and we are perfectly confident on the future of this treatment. So of course we can do many things. So in this case, we had to remove the two molars. We put the implants, the implant on the first molar in the same time, but we did not uh, uh, had the opportunity to put the implant in the second the molar. So we made the bone preservation, we made the regeneration of the bone in this place. And then uh, we made the CTG, as you can see on the small picture, harvested from the pellet as well. And this will lead to good success for the future. So uh, as I just told, the new paradigms of the discipline and the old dogmas. So most of the times what we, when we remove the tooth, we used to make extraction, wait for the blood clot. After the blood clot, we had 
in the same time, biologically, the start of inflammatory response. Then we have the degranulation of the blood platelets, the release of the growth factor, the angiogenesis and the vessel dilatation, cell migration, proliferation, cell dif differentiation. Every student and every surgeon knows that very well today. And this will lead to uh, a new bone regeneration a new uh, gingival uh, regeneration. And then after CBCT control and after maybe six months, we used to place the implants. Nowadays, as much as we can do, we try to do all this in the same time. So as we just saw, more tissue and less titanium is, um, is something that we can follow and we must follow as soon as we can and as much as we can. So of course, we could talk about the characteristics of the implants, but I guess that uh, all the professors you have uh, already uh, sh show you all these, uh, all these things. But of course, we need to make a good implant positioning. We have to put good abutment on the right place. Of course, we are using growth factors and we have to closely check the biological factors of the patients. And most of the time, as much as we can do, we can make extraction, immediate implantation and immediate loading. So as you can see, this was an extraction, immediate implantation, bone regeneration all around. This is the implant I use and this is a, uh, why it's uh, such a convenient implant because as it's a, a subcrestal surgery, we place the implant maybe two or three milliliters down the bone under the crestal position. It gives us the opportunity to have big osseous spikes between the implants and that spikes are supporting the papilla. And this is why we have nice reconstructions. So we go very quickly on the implant characteristics, but one of the main topics for me is, of course, the connection. And if we have a connection bacterial proof, and if we have an internal conic connection, it leads us to major success and more success than if we use the old school hexagonal connection. There is a recent study uh, done in 20, in 2021, so it's really, really recent. It came out in last March, which is quite interesting, talking about the position of the implant. So subcostal positioning of the implant for the same gingival high leads to conservation and proliferation if you put the implant between two to three millimeters subcrestal. If you put them on a normal crystal way, crystal way or under crystal only one millimeter, you will lose some bone. So if you want, don't want to lose the bone, it's minimum two millimeters down and you can promote and regenerate the bone if we put the implants three millimeters sub crystal. So this can be a good thing to consider for the future. So as you can see, the main difference with the subcrestal surgery on the right hand side is that the on the shoulder of the implant, the bone can be creeping and this will fix and give us much, much more good stability. So this is a subcrestal surgery, as you can see, three millimeters down the level of the bone. And this allows you to give a good emergence profile in order to make a good implant with the good uh, angles of the, the emergence profile. And of course, it leads to a good restoration. So uh, we can do this also for uh, multiple restoration. And this patient came to the office with a bridge on the three last tooth on this lower jaw on the right hand side. And as you can see, we removed the teeth and we made no incision for the flap. We just made the soft brushing of the flap that allows us in the buccal aspect, but also in the lingual aspect to close the wound very closely. And uh, 
this is what we did. We did the implant in the same day. We did the bone graft in the same day. We covered the graft by the membrane, PRF membrane, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes in a poncho technique. And then we had the opportunity to uh, suture closely the wand in order to have such a nice healing. This is a healing after two days after surgery, the day where we took the impression for the provisional crown. And this is the provisional crown in uh, on site. Of course, and it is immediate loading. It has to be in under occlusion in order not to put pressure on the implant. Otherwise we could lose them, but three implants is okay if we uh, can uh, unite them. And this is what we had for the definitive surgery, for the definitive uh, restoration. <clears throat> so talking about the implant positioning, there is the three different sections. And in the actual section, sagittal section, as we just saw, we need to preserve a two millimeter gap between the buccal aspect of the bone and the buccal aspect of the implant in order to promote the preservation of the cell and to promote the preservation of the bone all around the implants. Same thing as we just saw a few minutes ago and Tano again demonstrated in 1995, we had to put the implants 2.5 millimeters to four millimeters away from the cemento enamel junction, which means subcrystal. So characteristics of implants, I will not talk about that today because I think we're running out of time, but uh, still have in mind that the subcrestal the, the sub positioning is a good option to succeed in the good treatments. And this is what we can have. And you see the spikes of bone over the shoulder of implants and the spikes are supporting the papilla. And this is why we have nice reconstruction. Again, from the same uh, um, study that I mentioned a few, uh, few slides ago, um, if we're putting the implant in the crestal position, we need at least four millimeters of gingival high in order not to lose bone. Otherwise, if we have a small gingival high, we will surely lose the bone. So this is why again, maybe the subcrestal positioning should be considered as a standard now. So uh, to respect the biology of the patient and more and more people and more and more speakers are nowadays uh, convinced that the patient is uh, a, a key for the success of our treatment. And of course, we all know that patients with uh, disease, inflammatory disease, like uh, diabetes, for instance, are... Are pretty much um, are pretty much uh, engaged in a bad uh, results in surgeries. So in order to do that, we at the clinic we used to check many things, and we check particularly two things: the vitamin D and the cholesterol. So vitamin D, and it has been again uh, promoted by the recent studies about the about the the COVID. And we know that uh, vitamin D is very important. So um, we have also the cholesterol, which is very important because the cholesterol metabolism occurs mainly into osteoblasts. And as you know, there are two kinds of lipoproteins. We have the LDL and we have the HDL. The LDL are bad because they are they gain to oxidants and HDL are good, they are antioxidants. So if we have a high rate of LDL, it will lead to oxidation. Oxidation will lead to osteoblast apoptosis, death of the osteoblast. And saying so, we will have a slow bone metabolism. And of course, it will lead to increase of fat in the bone because we have less vascularization as well. So, and Brandmark used to say in 85, when I see a yellow bone, I cancel the transplant. And that was quite wise. So which rule for the cholesterol? If you have a failure or before a big surgery, and now we manage all the patient with that, check the LDL cholesterol and maximum the patient is 1.4 gram per liter. And if not, 
if it's higher, then refer it to his practitioner, to his doctor, and then try to manage it to be under this rate. Vitamin D, as I just said, uh, is one of the most published topic in medicine. There were more in 2017, there were more than 300 articles about vitamin D and its relation on immune disease, diabetes, infection, allergy, smoking, cancers, and so on. So just a short reminder that a, uh, vitamin D production is under UV and we need sun exposure to make the uh, vitamin D. The normal rate is 25, 13 nanogram per millimeter, but now we know that over 40, it's better. So we have to supplement the patient most of the time in order to have good healing in the bone, in the surgery, in the, in the, the gingival surgery as well. So this is one of the main things we use for this kind of surgery, and it's called PRF, platelet rich fibrin. This inventor was Mr. Shukrun Joseph. He's a doctor anesthetist. He lives in France in Nice. He's on the right hand side of the picture. And he published many articles, many uh, evidence based things on the PRF, more than 700 publications. And you can see uh, his name uh, appears 13 times in 2017. And how, how, is, how is it going? So we just take a simple blood draw on the day of the surgery. We make the centrifugation of this uh, blood in the tube and we recall the PRF, which is a fibrin clot, including all the white cells and most white cells, it has to be discussed, but the platelets. And this is the PRF we use. So when we have this kind of platelets, this kind of clot, we put them in a PRF bar, press it, and then we make small membranes as thin as the collagen membrane that we use to use in this kind of reconstruction procedures, but this uh, will replace the collagen membrane. So the PRF, as it is a fibrin clot, is a bioscaffold and a provisionary matrix for the restoration of the tissues. So you can see from the day of the surgery on the left hand side to two weeks after the surgery, this is what we have using this kind of thing, and the closure is quite nice and the aspect of the tissue is very nice. Again, some other surgery, G0, this is G plus four and this is G plus 10. And you can see that this healing is not as good as the other. And this will, and this is surely uh, depending on the patient. And maybe at that time, we did not manage that the patient had the right vitamin D or had no uh, issues about the general uh, disease that he, that, that he could have. PRF, so 14 days after the surgery. And Udagawa said it and uh, presented in a publication in 2013. So the restoration of an adequate blood supply is essential for the bone healing success and is a key to success of bone augmentation procedures. And of course, what uh, platelets are used are useful. Platelets, when they will degranulate, they will liberate in the environment their growth factors. And all these growth factors, the main growth factors, will lead to major blood vessel constrictions, VGF, uh, vessel growth factors. And of course, the more uh, vessel we have, the more cells are getting and are promoted to get into the, the, the healing round and we have more bone and we have more quality of bone and we are more uh, gingiva. So this is what we do every day. So we make a very easy phlebotomy. And then uh, we just draw fastly the blood into the tubes. Okay, then we balance the tube into the centrifuge, centrifugator, and then we centrifuge all the tubes. So we have different settings. We can use platelets liquid. It's called APRF liquid. We can use them also uh, solid, as we just saw for the membranes. So this is how we make the sticky bone, which allows us to modulate, to sculpt the bone that we want to regenerate in this uh, 
uh, surgery for augmentation uh, for of course horizontal augmentation and for small vertical augmentation as well like the sausage the urban uh, sausage technique described by urban so this is what we do we put the uh, materials which is here a uh, biobank, which is a human bone bank. Or oh, today we use human bone bank and we mix him with 50% uh, of allograft, which is porcine or equine or bovine bone as well. And in less than one minute, we have this aggregate. So we have re made the rehydration of the bone substitutes and we have something very sticky that we can modulate, that we can sculpt as much as we want. And this is very easy and very convenient to use in order to build the new bone that we want to reconstruct. So again, passing that very quickly, just to show you how we can do the things. Okay. So uh, talking about the full arch procedures, what are we talking about after having all these uh, all these things? We talk about extraction of all residual roots, immediate implant place placement. Of course, we make bone graft and the PRF with the sticky bone technique, and we make immediate loading. So this is a presentation of a case. So this patient had many crowns, there were fractures, there were inflammation all around the periapex. So there was no way to keep this tooth in order to make a good reconstruction. So we decided to remove all the radial teeth, elevate a flap, put the implant. This is non-guided surgery. So we try to put them as parallel as possible considering uh, natural, uh, uh, how to say a uh, natural reference which is the palatal interior palatal foramen. And you can see, considering the placement of the implant, they are all placed subcrestally. There you can see the transfer cuppings put on the abutment. So we place the implant, we place the definitive abutment, which are conical straight abutments. And then we place in the same time, the cuppings. After this, we can easily do the bone grafting. And you see that the fact that we position the implant in a more palatal aspect gives us the opportunity to make the good graft in the buccal aspect and to allow us to do the graft properly. So this is what we have. We put the graft in the, in, in the gap, then we graft all over, over exceeding the graft in order to sculpt a good ridge. And then after this, we place the membrane that we just saw a few minutes ago, all over that. And then we make the, search, the, the, the suture of the, of the tissues. This is the x-ray just after the surgery. And this is how we tracted the flap. So we liberated the flap by making incision of the periosteum or by brushing it in order to release it because we definitely need no compression, no traction on the tissue. And this is one of the major things that we have to take care of. And as you can see, we release as much the tissue that they are covering, the tissue are covering the healing caps that are six millimeters high. So this is why the the company made now nine millimeters high post-surgery, post-op surgery, so we can make it, it make, it can make it really easy for us. Then we take the impression and two days after the lab gave us the provisional uh, bridge, which is a metallic bridge with a very strong and very solid armature that will contain all the implants all together. And of course, we try to have the good shape design in order to manage the good emergence profile that we talked. And then this is what we have two days after the surgery when we remove the healing caps. And then this is the bridge placed during the same sense, the same, uh, the same uh, day. So two, this is seven days after surgery. So this is what we have seven days after surgery. And this is why we have six weeks post-op. 
the smile of the patient, and again, the smile of the patient, and you can see how the gum is healing and how the things are promoting. You can see that we have some little gaps, some little black spots uh, in the middle of the teeth, but this will, with the healing, this will be enhanced. And you see that as the day pass, the, the healing is better and better than eight month post op. This is what we have. And we recreated papilla, we recreated neck of the tissues of the, uh, of the, um, of the gingiva. And with the definitive prosthetic, this is what we have. And this is what we have again. 18 months and that's the smile of the patient and this is what we have five years post-op so this I don't know if you remind but this is one of the first pictures that I saw you that I show you and as you can see there are eight implants in the upper jaw and what is very nice is that during all these years and all this month the tissue keeps on promoting and because the patient has a good maintenance we can say that the restoration is a really a success and we think that for the very long term there won't be any problem so many other things that we can do for that for this patient uh, he had absolutely no bone in the upper in the central part of the of the jaw he refuses a main bone graft so he opted for through sinus lift, put three implants in each and put something like this is very okay with that he smiles, he's a, pa he's a happy patient. And this is uh, my team with him. And uh, this is a good thing for all of us. So as I just said, maybe sometimes eight implants are a good option as well. So this is another reconstruction. And then this is another reconstruction on eight implants also. And you can see always the same thing. The implants are placed in a palatal aspect in order to promote and to leave space for the bone and for the gum in the vocal aspects. So uh, this is another option, eight implants, and this is what we have after the, after the definitive crowns and all the time, every time the papilla are regenerated and this is because we make subcrustal surgery that promotes bone spike, that promotes Papilla, and this is what this is why we have nice. Uh, uh, and there was the, the the provisional, and that's the definitive. And this is why we have nice smiles for our patients. Again, this is one of my very first case, maybe eight years ago. I don't remember exactly. So we made the two Joe in the same days. Uh, this is, uh, we placed the provisional 48 hours after the surgery, then for lab consideration, we had to take another uh, uh, REM, uh, and then we had to place the upper uh, provisional restoration 48 hours after, so this is at 96 hours. So this is the patient, and this is the patient with the provisional up and down, and this is the bone healing and this is the gum healing and uh, definitive prosthetic place there and this is the patient which is quite happy and of course if i had to do it today i would maybe remove one of the 10 implants in the upper jaw and make maybe only on eight so uh what should you take home today is that maybe a respect of the patient and the biology is one of the essential part because is at the center of the treatment. And of course, if its biology is not good, we will fade certainly our surgery. So we have to manage these simple things with simple blood tests. Of course, we have to respect the implant positioning in order to promote the emergence profile. And uh, uh, of course, the improvement of the tissue will lead to a nice success of our treatment. Thank you very much for your attention. And this is the end of the presentation. And sorry for all the uh, little Thank mistakes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John. Okay, uh, the next session is a Q&A. So uh, there's uh, several questions in here, so I will read it to you. Okay, uh, yeah. first of all, the first question is from Dr. Melissa. 
Uh, she said that thank you, Dr. Jung, for nice presentation and interesting topics. I want to ask for anterior implant placement. Do we better do immediate leading, uh, immediate loading also? Too? And do we also do final restoration at first visit? Or if we do temporary restoration, how to make the best temporary res restoration for the best aesthetic result? Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Melissa. Uh, yes, uh, uh, immediate placement for interior uh, for interior tooth is uh, is uh, is maybe why this technique has been developed. Because, of course, we can believe that if someone loose lost his uh, central incisor, it's a good thing if we can uh, do something for 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 the person in the same surgery and the same visit. So, of course. Uh, removing uh, a tooth and putting an implant in the same time, if of course the biology and of course if we have space and of course if the placement of the implant is ensured to be securely done, it's a good thing to do it at the same time. And of course, we can make a provisional restoration in order to restore the aesthetic and the social life of the patient. Um, most of the time, Depending on uh, nowadays, maybe Stroman, if we're talking about the brand, uh, with this implant, uh, with the SLA active and rock solid, says that we can put the definitive restoration in maybe three to four weeks. I have no expertise on that, and there is no literature that can assure that this is, a, that this is a, an option. But the good thing is that a provisionary restoration is always a good thing. And as, as um, it's made in under occlusion, there is a small, very small, there is few aesthetic, um, uh, how to say, um, uh, inconvenience that the, the tooth is not exactly with the same size as the other one, but it's a good thing. And most of the time we made the definitive restoration three months after the, after the, the provisional restoration. Thank you, Dr. John. So primary stability is still uh, is still uh, one of the factor for the immediate temporary uh, temporary, right? Of course, of course, of course, it's necessary, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Dr. Lisa Amir. Uh, she is our uh, actually a, a lecturer on the implant uh, in, uh, implant. <coughs> In plan in the uh, University of Indonesia. So, um, sorry, uh, her question is: Thank you for your lecture, Dr. John. If the remaining bone height is not possible for subcrestal positioning and crestal placement is done, how was the stability of the papillary regeneration? Did you also observe simultaneous re uh, regeneration of the alveolar crest? And do you have any suggestion to improve bone regeneration in this case? Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, many things in these questions. Um, how could I say? What could I say? Um, if the remaining, depending on which site we are talking, if we are talking about the aesthetic uh, site, if we are talking about the interior uh, placement, of course, the success of the treatment will be the aesthetic. And as much as the patient presents the gum, it is more and more important to manage the good bone high and the good um, gingival high to assure uh, the, good, uh, the good aesthetic treatment. So um, if the remaining bone high is not possible for subcrestal positioning, this is the question, uh, and the crestal implant placement is done, how was the stability of the papillary regeneration? I have no idea. I didn't make any study on that. Uh, so I could not answer because uh, in that case, what I would do, I would make a bone regeneration, even a vertical bone regeneration. I would then make a, a, um, a gingival graft, uh, whether we need a free gingival graft if we don't have at all 
uh, carotenoids, gingiva on the bocal aspect, or maybe I would place a CTG in the same time of the implant placement in second stage surgery. But I will be very, very, very precise on the fact that after placing the implant, I would make everything to ensure the good reconstruction of the bone and the gum to ensure a good treatment at the end of the surgery. So yeah. I wouldn't do the same the thing in the in the same step. Uh, yeah. So sometimes we have to wait, right, uh, Dr. Jun? Um, probably it's not yeah. possible yeah. for the immediate loading. Sometimes we need to delay the treatment and gather the bone first. Uh, the the most, probably the most important thing is uh, to make the, the correct uh, treatment planning. Is that right, Dr. Jun? I didn't understand the end of your of your sentence. Uh, uh, the most important thing is to have a perfect treatment plan for the patient because every treatment plan for a patient is unique, right? We cannot. Definitely, definitely, you're absolutely right, and uh, and this is why the prosthetic project has to be done at the first step of the of the process, and why why we have decide what option we are going to. Uh, to take for uh, in order to, 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 to respect the prosthetic treatment, then we are going to do all the surgery process. So if the bone is not enough, we will graft bone. If there is not enough gum, we will graft gum. And then we will place the implant if the implant is required. And then we will do the provisional restoration at the same time if we have the stability of the implant in the same time. And then we will do the final restoration. And maybe sometimes during all this process, we have to reevaluate. Sometimes we have to do some gum surgery again. We have to do a surgery again in order to promote again the nice papilla and so on. So always do things step by step. And as you just say, there is no um, there is no uh, one case applied to all the patients. Every patient is a particular patient, and we have to follow that. Of course, you're right. Thank you. Okay, the next question uh, uh, come from Dr. Arat uh, Ibrahim Rambe. Uh, hello, Dr. Uh, oh, sorry, the chat was missing. Uh, hello, Dr. John, thank you for a wonderful presentation. I would like to ask a question about immediate implant placement. Often, patients come to the dental clinic with a gross caries that lead to apical infection, which could inhibit bone formation around the implants. How do you, how do you manage how do you manage the simultaneous regeneration of the alveolar crest? And do you have any suggestion to improve bone regeneration in this case? Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. So it, it, was, it was actually because, because the windows uh, uh, keep spinning over. So I will, uh, I will read okay. it. Okay. Hello, Dr. John. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. I would like to ask a question about immediate implant placement. Uh, Sometimes uh, a patient will come with a gross carrier that leads to apical infection. Uh, how do you manage those apical infection if you want to do an immediate implantation? Ah, okay, so uh, this is another topic because the apical infection sometimes can be cured by uh, reducing the endodont treatment or then now by making an apical injury. So in case as I guess that there is no way to preserve the tooth or maybe doing all this would not lead to a, a good solution in order to conserve the, 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 the tooth and we have to extract it to put in implants. So uh, what are the options? If I can easily make the scraping and the cleaning of the, of the socket and I can remove the apical infection, uh, for me, there is no not put the implant at the same time. I don't put the implant in the same time when it's very infectious and when there is nothing, uh, nothing done for the periodontitis. If the apical period is treated enough, I can remove it easily. I would make the implant. Of course, the biology will lead. Of course, the the, the habits of the surgeon will guide the, the, the process. But for me, it's not a definitive uh, uh, contraindication to put the implant at the same time. Okay, Dr. Dr. John, 
uh, probably this is the last question for Dr. Fernandi. Uh, thank you for the lecture, Dr. John. I would like to ask regarding uh, your consideration before deciding to do the immediate placement and loading. Is there some specific? Uh, is there some special consideration, especially related to the patient condition and the procedures? Also, for the patient, uh, for the patient presented, did it show any problem post treatment? Thank you. Um, very uh, and surprisingly, very cool. Uh, because, of course, we sometimes elevate big flaps, but this is all what we do. And removing the teeth, putting implants, making the bone graft at the same time. In the case we have primary stability of all the implants, in the case that we can put very parallel all the implants, in the case that we can take the impression in the same time, the, the suite, the, 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 the post-treatment procedure are very, very, very light. So most of the time we can have like a little edemia, we can have patient a little bit like this, but um, most of the time is is a very a very cool procedure. And uh, considering the special things that we have to consider, of course, so we 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 talk about that. Uh, we we it's necessary to manage all the blood tests. It's necessary to be sure that there is a good um, uh, promotion and a good uh, would say. Um, uh, periodontitis things. Uh, every patient that comes to the clinic, they won't get into any surgery before have a precise periodontitis plan. Everybody is taught how to brush his teeth. Everybody is taught how to put the floss, how to put the micro brush. And of course, we go to surgery when the gum when there is absolutely no inflammation anywhere. And this is one of the most things also that we have to respect that if we are building such big things on a bad soil with inflammation, with gingivitis, with periodontitis, we will have no success for sure. So of course we have to manage all this. The condition of the patient, the condition of the gum, the condition of the tooth, and of course, with the technique and with the, 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 the things I just shown, the, the post-op procedure are quite low. Okay, Dr. John, thank you for your answers. Okay, so uh, if there are uh, any questions for Dr. John? It's a really, really interesting uh, lecture because as we know, the immediate loading is uh, kind of trending topic in, in the world right now, right, Dr. John? And thank you for sharing that. Yes. I, hope, uh, I, hope, I hope we have a good collaboration uh, again with Universitas Indonesia. Right. It would be a pleasure to be there as soon as and, and as much as, you, as you'd like. It's always my pleasure to be with you and to share our knowledge and our skills. And you're right, uh, immediate implantation is a, is a main topic and uh, it has been demonstrated that immediate implantation and, uh, and uh, deferred implantation in the, in the results. It's like uh, the, the success rate are quite the same. Yeah, uh, okay, sorry. Uh... Uh, sorry, Dr. John. Probably one uh, if you, if one question for me. Uh, do you have any consideration for uh, the material for your prosthetic? Uh, because I see there's a lot of uh, PFM on your uh, on your topics uh, on your case presentation. I mean, I uh, I'm sorry. The, the connection oh. is unstable, and I did sorry. didn't get anything. I will repeat my question. Do you uh, do you have any uh, material Thank selection you. for the for your restoration? Whether it's a PFM or a zirconia, your preference. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right, and thank you for this question. And as you must know, uh, the, 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 the gingiva, the gum, has a very, very good, uh, how to say, a very good connection with the zirconium. So most of the time, what is 
considering the single restoration tooth, most of the time I try to make screw retained uh, implant uh, crown. So most of the time I use, I place the implant in the, in the corridor and we make straight restoration. So at this time, we make the definitive abutment custom with zirconia all around the implant and on the contact all, all around, not the implant, all around the gum. So the contact gum and the abutment is most of the time done with zirconia. And then, then we put the felspatic with the, the ceramic upon. And uh, considering the large restoration, uh, we would have done the same thing. We did main zirconium bridge, which is very good for the gingiva, I just said, but it's very hard. And considering the bimaxillary uh, restoration, now, if I make the upper jaw with the zirconium, I will make the lower jaw with something more resilient, like maybe a metallic titanium bridge with uh, maybe resin tooth all upon in order to make smooth contact and not to make zirconium against zirconium, which is very, very, very hard. And the patient, most of the times you can hear it, you can hear it, um, doing like this when he eats, when he talks, because it's too strong, I like a material. I don't know what, I don't know what you, uh, what about that, but I guess uh, you must have one like this. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jo. Oh, uh, one final question from uh, Dr. Steven. Uh, thank you for the lecture, Dr. John. Uh, I would like to ask regarding to the implant final restoration, is it okay to use a free end restoration on implant? What about the cantilever effect on the implant? Thank you. Ah, yeah, good. Uh, thanks for seeing. And uh, I try to make it as much as I can. Most of the time when the patient doesn't want to have a sinus lift and, uh, and sometimes we can place only implants at the, at the fifth. There is no space to put implants in the six, seven. So most of the time when we put like maybe eight implants, we can make a cantilever for the first molar and that works very well. It depends on the, on the, on the material that we use. But for instance, if we use uh, zirconium, full zirconium, or if we use a frame made of titanium, there is absolutely no problem to put a one tooth cantilever, right? Okay, Dr. John, I think uh, we are already finished the Q and A time. I I'm sure a lot of a lot of participants want to ask you a question, so we're looking forward to another collaboration. Okay, so I will uh, give the <laughs> yeah, I will give the floor to Dr. Melissa. Thank you, Dr. Melissa. Dr. Melissa, you uh, you still on mute? Oh, right. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahendra. And thank you, Dr. Jean, for a very interesting uh, presentation. I think there will be lots more of questions from the participants, but because you will have another patient waiting for you <laughs> on uh, the next session, so I will okay. uh, perhaps we will have okay. another. Uh, session, maybe smaller group for case uh, sharing okay. with you in another event. Okay. So hopefully you will be able to join us in another uh, opportunity. Okay. I think the connection. My pleasure. <laughs> so thank you so much. And uh, this. Yes, this collaboration is made possible. Uh, also, we are being supported by the Embassy of France here in Indonesia. So Mr. Rahman is here to support us. Thank you very much. So we hope we will have more collaboration in the future. And for all the participants, please uh, fill out the feedback form that we have sent you in the chat box. And uh, please advise, advise us for the next theme that you would like to hear in our regular general lecture. So thank you very much for participating. Uh, Professor Linda, thank you for uh, opening and attending this um, event. So officially, I will close this general lecture. Okay. Thank you so much for, participa for, for participating. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John. Thank you.
Take care. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Stay healthy. You too. Bye. Ini kemarin uh, kami coba pak, kami coba untuk matching, melakukan matching, matching antara hasil dari dapur respect terhadap uh, penetration testing. Jadi ada beberapa yang kira-kira sama dan ada beberapa yang juga uh, belum ada. 